Warning, what you are about to see and hear is for entertainment purposes only. The opinions expressed on the show are our opinions and do not reflect the views of BTW21 or its staff. Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel and Chad. is looking for someone real people are looking for something real just be real welcome to the be real the podcast we're your host daniel lewis brother chad hudson hello we also have peckerhead with us yeah he's always overlooking he's, he's always, hot he's, he's been in the 90s for weeks it's been in the 90s chickens do they like hot weather no they don't well they're from the jungle but i so i guess they do like it Really? Well, they're hardy things, you know, warm weather, cold the, weather, does, they don't care. You being a chicken man, and you raise chickens, turduckens, and all these other things, do they produce more eggs when it's hot or less? Less. Less when, eggs. When in the 90-degree weather, egg production slows way down. Really? Yeah, so, so in the early, early spring, no, no, not cold weather too. Really? Either extreme cold or extreme heat. Uh, they so just they're like prefer- bikers. Huh? They're like bikers. I ride all year long. Well, we, we, yeah, we, we ride all year long, but we, <laughs> I know that we do like the spring, and we're not That's so much sure. productive in the summer, and then we produce. And yeah. the, and Al, Alan Ham and I rode out to uh, Winston-Salem. Was it Winston? Yeah. And we died. <laughs> yeah. Stop well, I'm glad you was resurrected. It was hot. It was, it was really hot. It was real hot. <laughs> But anyways, but we anyway, got a guest here today. We got a guest with us here today besides Becker Ed. We got Tom with us from the Virginia Department of Health, West Piedmont District. Yes. I was so worried I was going to mess that up, so I had to have that it on my pretty, phone. That's that was like, good. I would have messed that up. But Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks Virginia for coming out. Department Appreciate of Health. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Yeah, good Thanks to, for inviting me. Yeah, good to have you, Tom. I mean, yeah. I know that we uh, uh, were talking about another lady coming out here. She's uh, on the other side of the country pretty yeah. much almost. And yeah. then there's another lady, and um, unfortunately, she got sick. Yes. And so they kind of threw you under the bus. And Today? so here we are. Oh, this is, yeah. This yeah. is Tom. Yeah, I just yeah. found out a few hours ago. Just a few hours. It's, it's all good, though. <laughs> Thank it's, you. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all good. <laughs> so, Tom, if you would, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Just, oh. I mean, if you want to. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My name is uh, Tom Salyer, and the agency I work for, we were funded by the Virginia Department of Health. Okay, okay. We have uh, several funders, but they're one of our funders. Oh, okay. So I work for the Virginia Harm Reduction Coalition. Oh, and some I'm a, I've never heard of. So. Yeah, yeah. Would you, Virginia Harmony? Harm uh, Reduction oh, Coalition. Oh, Harm Reduction Coalition. Yeah, okay. Harm Reduction Coalition. And I'm a, and my position is a uh, infectious disease specialist. Oh. And I'm also a community health educator. Oh, wow. So we do HIV and hep C testing. And yeah. if someone tests uh, positive, then my job is to navigate them through uh, the care, getting their labs done, making the appointments, making, right. making sure they show up to the appointments. Then, um, okay, yeah, because where would you start? It, yeah. You know, if you got right. tested positive or something, I wouldn't know where to go. I haven't been yeah. to the doctor since 1986. Yeah. So a, if I you got did all kinds te- of shit going on, I probably yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> I stay away from yeah. that. Uh, but mo- that's it gotta be scary. Uh, yeah. You get this positive result on something because maybe you've been feeling under the weather you mm-hmm. said hiv or and hep c hep c yeah and, and you get this positive test now now what do you do where right. do you go which which direction do you head right yeah. and, and most and like our people our participants our participants you know are substance users okay and some are pretty it just depends on what level of use uh, that they have that's why we definitely need they need navigators because mm-hmm. let's say they're homeless or they live in unstable housing, uh, they couch surf, uh, just trying to keep them on track uh, so that we can get it cured and stop the spread. 
of uh, the disease, whatever they got going on, whatever they got going on, and, and we're at, uh, VDH is we're going to start doing um, syphilis testing soon too. Oh really? Yes. Wow, is that coming back? Or? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's really? Big, it's in this area. It's really high. Really? The rates are very high. Wow. Yeah. Huh. And um, and some of that has to do with uh, you know. Um, substance use really you know for not all of it but yeah. there are some like because you're at higher risk. the majority i would yeah. say would probably be substance abuse. yeah if you're you're at higher risk of uh, contracting a communicable disease if you're using right especially if you're sharing works if you're sharing syringes or even the glass pipes uh really well for a hepatitis c with the glass pipes well the the glass pipes you see, you know the syringes but just the lifestyle i'm sure as well you're you know, you're not bathing regularly, or right. you're not. Your hygiene's probably lower. No. You're, you're, you know, the drug has got your head so messed up. You're not thinking about those normal things that you would do. Right. And see, that's right. the other thing we do. Is like anything to reduce harm. So we have hygiene kits uh, for those really? that don't have water, so that they, whenever they're around somewhere where there's water, they can, uh, you know, keep themselves as clean as possible. Uh, also, if they have wounds. Uh, we give them the uh, items they need to take care of any type of wounds. Really? Uh, yeah. So any way that we can reduce harm uh, for people who are using, that's that's our goal. There you go. Yeah, that's our goal. Before so, we get any further, though, because I got a bunch of questions, you mm -hmm. just uh, just from your statement right there, I got a ton of questions like, what's going on in Martinsville? Can you tell us about Henry County? But if you would just introduce yourself, you've already done that. But just uh, earlier, before we started talking, you said use a transplant. Now we're where are you originally yeah. from, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, no, not at all. I'm uh, originally from Columbus, Ohio. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, cool, yeah. man. And my yeah. stepfather was from uh, Martinsville. Okay. So when he and my mother uh, retired, uh, they bought a little piece of land out in Ridgeway. Yeah. And it settled out there. And then years later... Uh, it's probably I've been here twenty years now. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so cool. I've been here for a while. Yeah. Oh, you're a transplant wow, wow. with roots. Then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm, yeah, this is yeah, this is definitely home. Right. Yeah, I'm not going Thank anywhere. Not just yeah. five years ago. Yeah, <laughs> it's been twenty. Yeah, a couple decades. And man. I really like it here. I, I guess part of it is because I'm aging, and you know, it's just I like the slow uh, pace. Right. Right, uh, right. You know, good community. I, good community. Yeah. And I really like that. Another thing that really attracts me to this area is uh, one of the things I like about it is uh, how you could be out in the community and you could see your local elective officials. Right. The, the right sheriff. There. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and they're there. So, you could, yeah. So, you could, you could have conversations with them or whatever. So, the, uh, the one thing that I do live. I, I love love living mm -hmm. in Patrick County as I know all my teachers yeah. that my kids go. Yes. I got several kids yeah, in several her. different grades, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I know where their teachers live. I know the teacher's mother, yeah, or their you know where their aunt lives, or and, and that's comforting. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. And so and I didn't you know because I always lived in the city. So coming here, I was the first year I was a little bit depressed. I'm not gonna lie, right. but. Eventually, you know, like I said, it, it just grows on you. It does. And if I if you like peace, yeah, it grows on you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. And so if I need city life, I just take a little road trip and right. go visit family or friends, and then just come hustle back. back. Nice, yeah, hustle back. Hustle back. Yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah. Yeah. So, so what you got? What what got you into this? Where you're at now? Like line of work or what do you mean? The line now? of work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what got me in this line over it, the reason I ended up coming here because I was I was sick at the time. Really? And my Sorry. mother comes to visit me and she didn't realize how sick I was until she saw me mm. and she and she asked me to come down here uh, for at least a year until I got well. Uh, but before that, I was in active substance use for many years. Okay. Uh, I basically, uh, whatever drug. I could get my hands on, I did. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, and so in 2000, I was at a bar and they were doing testing and I tested positive for HIV and hepatitis C. Oh, wow, mercy. So, yeah, so it was the total, I mean, I wasn't completely shocked, but it was a, a shock. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, now yeah. you say uh, what your profession is now is you help those people find. Did you have that help when you found out? No. So you were lost. Yeah, I was completely lost. And yeah. part of the reason I got so sick, that was a, that's a great question. Part of the reason I got sick, I had no support. I didn't, mm. I just thought, because you hear on the news, you just take a pill and you're going to be healthy. You could still live a normal mm. life. Right. But that wasn't the case with me. I became very ill very quickly. Well, you got Magic Johnson there. Mm -hmm. he, he caught it and back in, I don't know, 89, 90, something. 
and he's living the best life. Yeah, right. You Is know, it- healthy, strong, golfing, doing all this stuff. But we have the other side, no direction. And yeah. really getting sick and really going down right. fast. Normal people. He's not normal. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, it, it, and that's the perception most people have. You know, yeah. like, and uh-huh. you see the commercials, take one pill a day and you'll be fine. Right. Like, live a normal right. life. And some people, that is the case. But like in the city, I had no support. There were uh, places I could go, but I, I became depressed. Uh, I started using more. Man. And... Uh, Within a few years, I was really sick, and wow. so ba- this area really saved my life. Really? Yes. Really? So moved down here and got yes. recovery, basically. Got into care down here. There was an agency to help people who are positive, HIV positive, with uh, paying their medical bills. Really? You know, I had to apply for disability at the time. Now, what year was that, if you don't mind me asking? That so was two, find out in 2003. 2003. 2003. Oh, 2003. So just few years later just a couple of years later yeah you moved was, back down here yeah i moved down here or moved down here yeah huh. so um and then the support i've had in this community over the years and you know because i'm open about who i am right and everything oh be real yeah man. yeah, yeah, be real, be real. yeah. yeah me so, too. <laughs> and i've never really uh faced any backlash i'm uh, not to my face you know, like no one has ever like said really nasty things to me or treated me badly because of it. Right. Uh, so that says a lot about the people here, I think. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I think it says a whole lot. A lot I, of good I unfortunately have that perspective. Um, I don't believe there's as much <clears throat> racism as people say there is. I don't believe there's as much hatred as people say there is, at least not to your face. Yeah. Uh, you could play a victim. Mm-hmm. And Media sw- plays a big role. And be swallowed up by it. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I'm not sure that's actual truth, uh, yeah. you know. But I did want to back up real quick. You said that you started, uh, when you found out that you had HIV, uh, that you started using even more. Mm-hmm. So that's where it begins, that you're running from something, usually in a drug sense, that yeah. they're running from pain, they're running from something in their life. Mm-hmm. So then when you find something out like that, you you multiply it, yes. I'm sure. So I'm, I yeah. guess your drug use went up oh, yeah. a few fold. It was really bad. And yeah. it, like, it was the point I was taking cocaine to work with me every day. So oh, wow. All through work, all day, go home. Just to get through. St- start drinking liquor. All, yeah. You know, it was really bad. And, uh, and not only the other thing about that lifestyle is... Uh, it's exhausting for many reasons, but one of the, because of the lies, yeah. like oh, you're yeah. constantly having to lie to cover up this right. thing. And drama, then you, drama. Another, and then you, it just adds up and like you just become exhausted. It's overwhelming. And um, now Daniel and I, uh, we do partake in uh, a beer while we do our show. Yeah. And if you are still struggling with that, I would be gladly take it off my table. Oh, yes. no. I appreciate that. No, no. I like a cold beer myself. So, <laughs> And that's how we do it. I think Daniel yeah. and I both have, and uh, I don't think I'm speaking out of line, that in our youth, we struggled with alcohol. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and we went many years, uh, found the Lord. Yes. Uh, yeah. Went many years without it. Uh-huh. And we, I, I, we partake in it now slowly. We, you know, we uh, don't indulge Relax. like we used to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, yeah, we kind of do it anymore. like <laughs> right. <laughs> we kind of do it like an uh, adult. Yes. I, I, w- I would yeah. say. Yes. Um, but a lot of people can't. So, like I said, if, if it bothers you, I will mm-hmm. gladly take it off the table, my friend. No. And one of the other things I found in my journey, because I, I just assumed I was going to have to go to uh, some kind of recovery program. Mm-hmm. But once I started just working on myself, like getting therapy uh, and just doing good things. I think that's what it is. Yeah. That's like, what it is. Like just uh, yeah. like just walking in the woods. I right. Mean, you know, Amen. I never did anything like that living in the city. So just walking, when I moved here and they, the Dick and Willie opened up. Yeah. I mean, that it kind of like completely turned that's slowly what, started turning like my whole thought process and i would just leave there i'd walk the three miles a day and i would just, i would just feel so uplifted and positive about awesome. the day that's coming forward. i think that's what we were born to do yeah. uh a uh, hundred years ago a couple hundred years ago we'd wake up in the morning and we would go try to find food yeah and we would see beautiful things along the way. Yeah. We would see sunrises. We would see it starting to rain. We would see a rainbow. Those things brought us joy yeah. to this day. 
then we would capture that food or, or gain that food and that would be joy and then we would walk back and all of that is taken away from us it is yeah. now we're living in these walmart world. you know little yes. walmart world and and that natural joy that we were put on this earth to do is no longer here right yeah so wow. you did it with without going to, to a retreatment center no yeah. i wasn't able uh, yeah and when i first moved here uh maybe within a year of course i met somebody who knew somebody that was selling Coke. And well, of wow. course, so especially I, around here. So, no, I, yeah, so, I, here. so, so I started, I, you know, I started again. Yep. And that probably lasted about a year. But once I, I just stopped one day, I said I was sick of it. I was tired. Yeah, I'm done with this. Yeah, and then yeah. I was offered the agency that helped me when I first moved here with uh, services, uh, offered me a job. Nice. And yeah, I started volunteering with them first as a peer advocate. Um, just working with other people who were who was newly diagnosed right. and scared right. and you know right uh, so that's how I started in, in the position and then I ended up becoming a medical case manager nice. uh, with that agency good yeah. for you Mark. yeah that's good. <laughs> was was there any background to that or is that just where you came from well well the, no I didn't have no background no background just no. just what you endured through your life yeah just what I endured helped through you. my life so to, to, to help do people that. you don't need a background you, you really don't to, right. really don't you everybody's just, always got to look right. for the damn degree or something but yeah. and, and you know you, it's just if you've experienced it through life that's the best person you know the testimony yeah. is what reaches yeah I think and the thing about VDH, I mean, there's a lot of bad stuff we could say about government agencies. And, right, right. But there's right. a lot of good stuff that's happening at VDH. And, and one a lot of, of good people. And good people. Yeah. And one of the things um, within their HIV care services program is that they want to get people that, who have lived experience and they train us. Oh, wow. So that's how I was trained. Oh, wow. I just, they kept sending me to training after training after training. Yeah. Um, and then I was... I was qualified for nice. that position. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. cool. So, uh, and then the same thing with harm reduction. What I'm doing now, it's mm. sort of like all of us that work there are have lived experience, except for Ariel. Yeah, the, the rest of the staff, we all have lived experience with substance use, and some we still use, like <clears throat> you know, smoke a joint, you know, right, or right, have right. a beer, cold right, beer. Right, yeah, but um, uh, so yeah, the, so. Those type of pro programs, um, it's important to have people with very, experience. That's what I was going to say. I mean, yeah. very important. I mean, if somebody's going to speak on something, I'd rather them, yeah. uh, you know, you've been through it. Because it almost acts negatively if you have somebody preaching to preaching. you that right. has not lived right. through the experience. Right. Yeah. And I've went and to college. shut you down. Yeah, yes. and I've went to college, and I went through the EMT program. But, <laughs> yeah, I do. You know, uh, becoming an EMT, uh, the books are something to learn as far as, I guess, something just written sure. in stone. Yeah. But when you get out there and somebody's dying in front of you, that shows who you are. And you got to have that experience. I, you know, would I, would I rather have somebody that's, uh, what they would the the term would be qualified is because they went through all this schooling. Or yeah. what I want somebody that's been in the field for three or four years to say, "Hey, this is what we need to do. I've seen this before." You right. know, I mean, somebody with experience to me, and uh, you know, and I know it would go with Chad also as far as race car driving. Yeah, uh, he's a race car driver and was for oh, cool. many years. <laughs> yeah, it's very it's very cool. I try to do it's a very lot cool. of stuff, <laughs> but it, you know, he's, we're talking about all kinds of stuff, and uh, you know, when we're talking about it, he's. He, I watch these shows. I watch these things on YouTube, and I'm like, man, did you see that? And he's like, yeah. His right angle is that, and then the tire needs to come out. I mean, right. he, he knows he's got the experience. Yeah. To, I can't speak on it, but he's got the experience to know how you would need to get in that corner to be able to. And I see that, in, yeah. you know, in, in every aspect of different fields. And it just it blows my mind that we need more people with experience teaching other people. Yes. Yes. And so I'm grateful for you, man. I appreciate Very it. grateful yeah, for you. I appreciate yeah, it, yeah. yeah. I don't know if what I said made any sense. It makes a I'm lot just, of sense. Well, cool, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think just, that's why uh, Harm uh, Virginia Harm Reduction Coalition hires so many peers, right. people who have lived experience, because uh, it's easy for us to um, 
or where it's easier for the participants to open up with us. Right. Especially right. once they start trusting us. Yes. And then they, they will freely talk about. When uh, you say, I know, you yeah. actually know. Yeah. And, and I didn't read this in a damn book, but dude, I've been through this. Yeah. And so they, so they're open with us. They tell us how much they use and when they use. Awesome. And that's why we, cause we're there to meet them where they're at. Right. And so, and just show love, give them love yeah, well, thank God. And with no judgment. Uh, yes. We don't try to, uh, Say you have to do this. You have to go to right, rehab. Right, or, right, right. You know, when they're ready, we are definitely there and we're supporting them and we help them all through the whole process. Man, that's awesome. And even once they come out, we have two right now that's been successful going to rehab in Galax. Oh wow! Uh, a, a place called Sabrias. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah. we have positive responses from this particular place. Oh Not, wow! So that's who. If if someone comes and say I'm ready, I, w- I want to do this, then you know that's what we send them to right yeah. now. That's what we're sending. Now you said twice right there when mm-hmm. when I'm ready, and yeah. that's what it takes, yes. right? Yeah. I mean, you could Being sit there and talk to a stone wall. You yeah. could sit there and try to drill it, push it, whatever you want, but it takes that person to be ready. Yes. Themselves inside. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and so, so we mm-hmm. so like we're just there and ready for them whenever they're at that point. But if they never get to that point, then so be it. Yeah, you know, we're still going to love you. Right. And we're still going to help you. We're yeah, going right. to we're still going to try to help you find some food, and you know we're Man, still going to have a place to live. You know we're not going to. And so part of the other part of the harm reduction piece is that wherever people who are using, especially if they're pretty heavy in their use, and uh, they're houseless and whatever, you know, a lot of times you're disheveled or, you know, and people have these stereotypes of what uh, a you, uh, someone, an addict. Right. Uh, right yeah, we right, don't right. use that word, but that's a word that people describe. Yeah, majority. Like, uh, yeah an yeah. addict, uh, what they look like. And um, so uh, what was my point? <laughs> well, I do want to talk about why you don't use the word addict mm-hmm. and, and what, what that represents. Because I think a lot of people with language they don't use that word in offense. They just use that word because they don't know right. another word. And they've been taught that. And that, that's what they've been taught. All we've yeah. ever and, known. Addict, addict, that addict. Make, yeah, and see, I did the same yeah. thing and so I started, so I started working for harm reduction. Yeah. I mean, I use that, that language at, like an addict. Right. But for people who use, it's a, it's a stereotype and it's degrading. Right. It's like people look down upon people who... Right. Uh, are, are, are labeled addicts. Yeah. So that's why we use the term substance use. I substance. will be, I will be, this is my last year coming up of my forties. Uh-huh. And my mom will say that I look old on TV nowadays, but you know, she, she had me. So what does that make her? She saw no, you personally. But, <laughs> right. I did get to go see her. <laughs> I did get to go see her. So you look younger in person? I think so. I think. Yeah, hey Grace, what do you think? Do I look older on TV or younger? I, I think you look great either way. Okay, thank you. You don't gain 10 pounds, she you gain gets, 10 years. She gets paid to say that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry. But I, oh, now I forgot what I was going to say. What was I going to say? You were talking about your mom. Your last year. I don't know. Your oh, this is my year, last 40s. year. So I, ha- I have known a lot of um, users, uh, throughout all different types of my life. Yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, I knew a lot of uh, users. And then in the uh, when I turned into a teenager, I lost a lot of users. Yeah. Um, I am of a generation that lost a lot of people in the 90s yeah. uh, to drugs. Yeah. A yeah. lot. Yeah. Uh, but I, I wanted... Uh, still you, losing them. It's still losing them. Yes. Still, absolutely. Yeah, this still year, our, this year, uh, yeah, I've lost, lost quite, a few. quite a few of our yeah. Yeah. Few, uh, friends. And our you see them. Enough. You see them. And but you, there, it's not just one group. This was from kids to um, lawyers. Yes. To, you, you know, to stay-at-home moms. Yes. I mean, th- th- this doesn't affect just one group of people who you think it would who you think it would be so i guess i understand what you're saying by that addict yeah when you use the word addict you think of that individual in that 23 year old kid with greasy hair and you know using drugs metallica tattooed on his arm and and that's what i guess i so this i i understand it yeah yeah Yeah. i might not use it 
per, you know, I might use it on accident, but I might not say addict anymore. Yeah. Right. User. And, right. And every yeah. once in a while, I slip up and I use it too. I mean, right. but, you know, as long as I'm conscious about it and trying, trying to change. Right. You right. Know, just so that when I'm talking with our participants and I'm around them, yeah. that, you know, I'm being conscious about th their feelings and um, what they're going through. Right. So I don't want to make them feel any less. Right. Uh, so that's why it's important. Well, especially us. since you, you mentioned, you know, during uh, when, when it hit you in 2000, there was no support. Right. And so I, I, would, I would say that you would say, um, you know, you, you're trying to give them support. You're trying to give them something that you wasn't offered. Right. Basically. Yes. Yes. So that's what I think I want to talk about a little bit more on the second half is the HIV side of it. Okay. And uh, I think if, if if you don't mind, bring some light to us and to our viewers on, on that and maybe some treatment and, okay. and where you what go they can here. do now. Uh, so, so now did you catch that from using drugs or well activities while using drugs? I, th or, I think know? it was activity during while using drugs. Really? Because yeah, I mean. You know, I lived in Washington, D.C. at the time, and, you know, there's lots of bars and clubs. Oh, yeah. oh, and yeah. so it, it's, there was a term used back then. Now it's called chim sex, but it was called party and play. Hmm. So, like, you would just party uh, all night. And, and play. Then, and then play, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I don't mean to laugh, but that's, that's what yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, I think that still happens. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's the human condition. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. I mean, it even happens in places like that. You know, right. Oh, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Absolute, yeah. No, yes. absolutely uh, in Martinsville. Yeah. Uh, in 1980, Martinsville was was covered in HIV and AIDS, yeah. and, and yeah. some very important people in different positions yes. contacted that as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. So it, it is a, I think a lot of had to, I don't want to call nothing out, but okay. anyway. <laughs> I was going to say something. It, I is, might what know. It, it is. is what it is. It but, is what uh, it is. Yeah. 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 So thank you for coming out here. We just got the two minute warning. So we'll dive more into it. I mean, it's up to you wherever you want to go with this. Uh, definitely want to get more into what you're doing, okay. uh, your job, um, and your volunteerism. And just so, thank you, Tom. Thank uh, you, yeah, man, yeah, for being welcome. as strong I, as you are. And I'm just, I just appreciate you, you guys being so open. You know, absolutely, that's brother. What we want to I really this. didn't know how what I was going to share today, but right. just, just sitting here the first few minutes, I felt really comfortable, well, thanks, and man. I felt like it was a safe space. Yeah, please, and, definitely, and I would be able to share. Absolutely, and, brother. Um, it would be okay. Absolutely, so, brother. Man, I appreciate, I appreciate it. that. Yeah. I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. yeah we got know, a little bit more to talk when we come back. Whole lot. Come on back. <laughs> And we're back. Thank you for joining us here on Be Real, the podcast. If you hadn't hit that subscribe button, we'd greatly appreciate it. I mean, it's up to you if you want to. Hit the button. It does. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not about the monetary thing. It's about the sharing it thing. So if you will share it instead of subscribe or like, that'd be even better. How about comment? Yeah, or comment. Say hi. Yeah, just say <laughs> something. Thank you, Sherry, for commenting. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the other ones that's commented and uh, give us a good feedback. Uh, when we first started, we had some negative feedback, and that's okay, too. I mean, you know, it's got to you uh, roll with the punches. And so any feedback, any comments are good, and we yeah, really appreciate say it. say something negative. I don't yeah, care. Yeah, no, I, don't <laughs> I care can take either. it. I'm a big boy. Right. This is be real. So everybody's got their own opinion, and uh, so we, we respect opinions. We do. And so thank you, Tom, for coming out here again. Man, Virginia Department of Health. Uh, you're under a different uh, umbrella, yeah. or well, you're under the umbrella, I guess, of Virginia Department of Health, and so you're with, what did you say it was? Virginia yeah. Harm Reduction Coalition. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wish I could say that. I always <laughs> mess up every every show we do. I'm always like, what's your nice name? <laughs> <laughs> but we uh, greatly appreciate you coming out here, being open with us. We did not expect you uh, to come out here. and At all. At all. Uh, yeah. I thought it was the other two ladies. Right. And then it's just uh, the last gentleman. minute. Here you are. Last yeah. minute. Last here minute. he is. And I think we've learned. That takes a lot of balls to do that. It takes know? a lot. And uh, for what you've been through and to be able to speak to it and share with the public oh, and to open eyes up um, that 
that means a lot to us. So thank you, brother. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to talk about this stuff right. uh, because it helps reduce the stigma. Yes. You know, there's a lot of stigma around. A lot of stigma. Um, substance especially. use, HIV, mm. Hep C. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of stigma around all those it things. It is. And so, uh, you know, any opportunity I get to talk about it. I, 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 I hate like to be, I hate to sound corny or, you know, cliche, but one person. If it helps one person, right? right. One right. person right. sees one person. your testimony Amen. and what you're doing right. could Amen. change their path. That's right. 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 Exactly. One. One. Just right. one. We're doing it for that one. So thank you so much. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You're so from Ohio, and then you mentioned Washington, D.C. and then Ridgeway. 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 <laughs> and then actually we talked a little bit before the podcast. We did the podcast. Uh, you have a oh, ring. You said he wanted Francisco. to bring up the ring. He brought that up during halftime. Uh, uh, he was like, we, we got to talk about the ring, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, a few months ago, uh, my job sent me to a conference in San Francisco. Really? So me and my coworker, one afternoon after all the meetings and everything, we went into Chinatown. Nice. There you so, go. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I got this. Uh, it's supposed to be Jade, but I don't know if it's really Jade. It looks Jade. It's Jade. Yeah. So uh, I'd claim it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's Jay. beautiful. That's yeah, right. So I ain't never been past the mailbox. So you went to San Francisco for a conference and uh, Chinatown, what are you talking about? I mean, I've only heard it on the news, so I don't know nothing about it. Oh, yeah, that's really Coast. cool. Yeah, Chinatown, I, I believe, I, don't quote me on this, but I believe San Francisco has the largest Chinatown in really? the United States. Okay. I'm, yeah, it's huge. Yeah. yeah. We spent the whole afternoon and evening there. So Chinese all over the place. Yeah, all over the place. I and mean, not just, it's, a, it's a huge community. Right, and it's not just... Uh, it's actually probably authentic Chinese food, not what we get down here. Yes. Yeah. Hartsville chops. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. No, They're no, no, no. People. I worked yeah. at uh, <laughs> <laughs> nothing against any of them. I uh, I worked down there. I worked down there at Roadway Express and I uh, worked with a, a few Mexicans. Uh -huh. And uh, I love Mexican food. I love the Mexican restaurants. And they were like, Dude, you've never eaten Mexican. If all you've ever eaten is Mexican restaurants, right? Yeah, you need to try a real <laughs> right. taco. You I need to try a real burrito. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I from mean, ninety or eighty nine to ninety six, ninety five, I lived in California, uh, okay. south of San Francisco, uh, in between San Diego and actually, um, and they have. Authentic, uh, authentic foods. That's bad. You got to call it authentic, right? I was, I was trying to think of a different word, <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know, but, but it's true. But, yeah. uh, you know, I went over to my friend's uh, Jaime's house, and his mom had this stuff, and it lit me on fire. First of all, is that Which good? And I was like, is <laughs> you know, uh, but it did have a, a different seasoning. I mean. I think Americans put on that, you know, the French, you know, the French food or the yeah. Chinese food. Right. They put on their little. Yeah, the pizza from a tag. You know, <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. That's not a pizza. That's yeah. not spaghetti. So went out there for a conference. That's great. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. So, the, yeah, so there's uh, there's many, but well, not many, there's a few harm reduction conferences throughout the year. Okay. And so um, we try, well, the agency tries to send um Someone from the someone to go and experience the conference. And now you come back with a record of what you went over and yeah, what you learned. Or yeah, what you learned. learn a lot, like how other people, how other harm reduction is harm reduction agencies are what they're doing, what's working for them, what didn't work for them, nice. uh, just so that we can improve our services. And here. out there in California, there, I mean, their drug use is multiplied by well, yeah. the amount of people that live there. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and then the, on top of that, you know, their homeless situation out oh, there. Oh, Lord. Like, Oof. you know, here, you know, we have a homeless situation. And for years, a lot of people wanted to deny that it was not in my backyard. Yeah. We don't have, there's no one homeless in no, my backyard. No, we, on our way, <laughs> here, on our way here today, mm -hmm. over the bridge, we passed somebody yeah. that's um, yeah. homeless. And out we of know sight, that. out of mind. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. part of it, like, you know, I also worked with the... Um, warming center for the last four years really? with, yeah with ariel wow. uh but my doctor told me this year that i shouldn't go back I, after this last year because i was so stressed out because um. you know we me and ariel would be there every night uh and if the, the, the overnight volunteers didn't show up we would have to stay oh wow uh, yeah and then go to work 
And so I really started, the stress was really getting to me and I was missing doses of my medication. Man. So when I was talking to my doctor about it, he's like, you shouldn't do that anymore. Right. You, well, know, you, you, you have to take involved. care of yourself yeah. to take care Seriously. of others. Yes. You have to, yeah. you have to really, really. Yeah. So, yeah. so, uh, so yeah. 2000. Calm down, brother. Yeah. You're going to fix it up. <laughs> Slow it down. <laughs> you just really wanting to help. Yeah. yeah. So Absolutely. in 2003, you moved here, uh, you moved to Ridgeway. 2003 thereabouts how did how did you become involved with the foundation you're with now the harm well um, uh, so back in 2008 I did a I, I, I organized a world AIDS day event at really? Patrick Henry Community College then really? it was called Patrick Henry yeah. Community College I still call it that. yeah me too and um, you're that great <laughs> <laughs> yeah and she's a part of that and uh, Errol was I'm a student a yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sorry. So uh, Ariel was a student there, and at the time she saw me. And years later, uh, I was at an event, and she approached me and said, "Wow, I will never forget, you know, your presentation that day. It really stuck with me." Um, so and, what what got you to do the presentation? I'm sorry. So you you just out of the blue did a presentation? Just, yeah. Yeah. You felt like you needed to do that. Yeah. So what I did, once I started like working and I started talking to people in the community, I, when I started working for the AIDS task force, it was called the um, uh, AIDS task force. That's what it's called. Right, uh, right. And we just called it the task force. Uh, and it was uh, that we had an office in the hospital. Um, oh, really? Uh, um, okay. Yeah, so right here in Martinsville. Yeah, right here in Martinsville. Huh. Uh, and so when I started getting connected to other agencies through work, and, and started talking about my story, more and more people were interested in hearing it, which I, really surprised me. Right. Like, I didn't think people would want to even talk about it. Yeah. And so um, so I was a student at PACC. I was taking some classes, and World AIDS Day was coming up. And I was like, I really should do something. Right. And um, Good for you. I know. Good for so you. So I organized it. I, I got with the Virginia Department of Health. They brought some nurses over. They did testing that day. Wow. Uh, yeah, I just basically got there and told my story. And and the main reason was just, like I said, to reduce stigma. Yes. And so that people know it is in our area. Right. People are HIV positive in this area. Right. And it's and they look like everybody in this yeah. community. It doesn't discriminate. It no. doesn't care how much money you make or how much money you don't have. Right. What color your skin is. It does if you're male or female, if you're gay, if you're straight, right. if you're bi, it it does not discriminate. And so a lot of people just think it's a disease that happens to someone like me, you know, a white gay male. They don't think that it's going to happen in their community or in their families. Right, right, And the right. sad part about it for people living in this community who are positive, they have no one they can talk to. Yeah. Like they can't, they can't, they have to hide their medication because if someone sees their medication, Google's Worry it. about the questions. Mm -hmm. And so, and they're afraid of being rejected from the families, from the churches, from whoever that they, right. wherever they their can support. Their whole life. Yeah. Everything they've ever known. Yeah. Kind of just... And so for me, being a transplant, you know, someone, I didn't have that connection uh, that they have here, you know, for generations but or families. Man, damn, here. you took a leap of faith. Yeah. And, <laughs> I mean, you're, yeah. you're just like, well, yeah. I'm just going to do this. Yeah, yeah. And I had to talk to my family first, you know, because it would affect them also. Yeah. And my mother was scared to death. She mm -hmm. was like, there are people going to be mean to you. You know, you'll probably get threats all the time. And right. um, so I, I considered all that okay. before can, I went public. Can we just pause there for a second? You said your mother said said those things. She was just trying to protect you, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I think that that's what some of, not all of them, I'm sure that there's prejudice against stuff and, there, mm. you know, but I think a lot of Assholes. family members, right, asshole family members. Yeah. But I think a lot of family members and, and a lot are disinformed. Yeah. And that makes them, uh, by, you know. Prejudice. Pre prejudice against a situation that they are actually e illiterate about or they don't know anything about. Yeah. You know? It makes them scared. So, Sincerely yeah. ignorant. Is yeah. What I ignorant. Call there Sincerely. We go. Yeah. Right. Ignorant. Sincerely ignorant. Yeah. So getting out. And, and like you said, you were a transplant, so you didn't have that. Oh, I go to this church right. and I'm in this community and what's that one going to say? Cause you didn't care anyways. 
Right. Because you you don't know them. Right. So it, it gave I, you an outlet to, to speak up. Yeah, yeah. And I pounced. And be a hero. <laughs> I mean, to be honest with right. you. Right. But yeah, I pounced right. on that opportunity. I was like, I could do this. You know, I knew that I could do it. That's and, awesome, man. Uh, but what's i have i'm serious i've no i've had i haven't had any negative experience since coming out awesome. well, not, not one time wow. yeah so uh, and i'll tell you what years ago when i first started working in this uh with the aids task force uh there was a gentleman working here he was a ear doctor and he has a show i don't know i forgot i got his name well he invited me to come and talk but that was before i came out with my status so when he was like well, why are you so passionate about this work you know, I had a good friend who passed away yeah. from complications to do with AIDS. Mm. And I told him that was why. Right. And wow. when I went home, it just bothered me. Like, because I... There was my opportunity mm -hmm. to, to say right. 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 Yeah. And I, I, you know, why? So that's what sort of the started feeding, where I got the started thinking, well, why can't I do it? You know, right. why can't I just say it? You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, and now here in 2024, you're sitting on a podcast with two heterosexual males. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> doing yeah. better than we're doing. Right. We're right. Right. You're, saving, you're saving people's lives. Uh, right, yeah. we're drinking we're, a beer, we're interviewing <laughs> people that saves people's lives. You know, we're, that's uh, that's great. It yeah. is great. I think man. I think we're we're self mutilating uh, creatures. <laughs> we so are where we overthink. You know, uh, definitely my, 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 my family's not going to accept me if I'm gay. Yeah. My family's not going to accept me if, you know, this is what I choose for a living or I don't choose to go to church with them or I, I choose not. I, yeah. I think we, we overthink it so much we overthink yeah. everything. to where if we just be real yeah. and let it out, yeah. who cares? Right. You know, at the end of the day, who cares? Right. Let yeah. it out. Yeah. Right. right. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, thank you. What Tom. you do, yeah. man. You're welcome. Appreciate you a whole lot. So, what, when, when, did, I mean, what year was it that you actually came out? If you don't mind me asking, I think it was like 2000. The first time uh, it was maybe 2007. Okay. Yeah, 2007. Yeah. So after that first event, I did two more at PHC. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then I got sick again. Oh man. Uh, and because they put me on a new medication, plus I was working, I was going to school. Uh, and then I was going around the state through, with Virginia Department of Health. What was you going to school for? I know you're, I'm sorry. Social I work, but Social I never, work. I didn't finish because oh, I got sick. Well, right, and I said right, I was right, going right, to go right, back. Right. So I was so stressed out. Uh, and then if, you know, uh, having HIV, stress basically would kill you. Well, really. I, I, I read that one time mm -hmm. and I wanted to bring that up. So yes. your stress level really contributes to the level of HIV and how it affects you. Yes. Which that's a lot of things. Well, that, just a common cold will do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I could imagine what a HIV. Yeah. You know, yeah. And so you. like things were happening, like I was exhausted. I would forget to take my medication. I wasn't taking care of myself. Oh. I was out here doing all this stuff, but I wasn't taking care of me. They put me on a new medication, and I kept saying, something's wrong. I'm sick. I'm sick. Uh, they were like, give it six weeks. The next thing I know, I was like, Even like worse. Well, yeah, I was in intensive care for seven days. God. I mean, it really did a lot of damage. And it took me back to 2003 when my mother saw me and I was in that bad shape yeah, yeah, and I went into a, a deep depression and mm. I isolated myself for probably about five years. Really? It took me a long time to come out of that depression. And I think by far the worst thing that's happened to me since I've been diagnosed is that depression. Really? Yeah. It was horrible. The second. Yeah. Now, now do you yeah. think that depression has been, was there and has always been there, and maybe that's what caused the drug use. That's what, yep. That's what led the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the other thing that happened during that time, so I was doing all the stuff at work and, and under a lot of stress, but because I had stopped using, like all of this bad um, trauma, childhood trauma, and other stuff that happened to me, like. It just would not leave my mind. Right. And all those years, I guess because I was drunk or high, like I just was suppressed. able to keep suppressed. it suppressed. 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 And yeah. so for the first time as an adult, you know, I was dealing with all those issues. Right. And so it just, the, the drugs just delayed it. Yeah. It, it didn't take it away. It didn't make it any easier. It just delayed it. 
until further down the road yeah. of your life. I totally believe that. That's what yeah. I, yeah, that's what yeah. I, I It believe. does. Yeah. You know, it does. So I, I read something that depression is thinking about the past and anxiety is thinking about the future. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Truth. And I deal with depression and anxiety both. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, I, and I have all my life. Yeah. Uh, is there something that you could tell somebody that could, maybe steer them in a di different direction than drug use or, or something that maybe you've learned at one of these conferences that, that maybe was a turning point that we've identified that we could kind of alter right there. Definitely reaching out, but reach out to who? Yeah. yeah. Reach out. And see, who, who do we talk to? Yeah. Say, I have a problem. Yeah. I have a problem. I, I, I've been using, I, I'm about to lose my family. I'm about to, who do I, who do I contact? Yeah. What, how do I help? And so the, what happened to me, because I had all these people supporting me, because I, they were like, oh, you're just you're so great. You, you're open and you talk about it. But when the depression hit and I was scared and when I would go and, and there were two people in particular that I was, I thought they were really good friends, that they really cared about me. Right. But when I got sick and depressed, yeah. they didn't want to hear from me. They didn't want to really? hear it. They didn't want to wow. hear it. Like one of them made a comment that, um, well, people don't want to hear about if you're sick all the time. They don't want to talk about it, you know. But when I was doing great and out there sharing my story, yeah, they, they were, were they were praising me. Oh. So I, the betrayal. Uh, so it's that, really, that it's, makes it even worse. It's really, it's really, uh, and I don't, and I didn't even get this until I was depressed going through it. Is that how people respond to you when you are trying to ask for help? Right, makes a big difference. Major difference. If they would have responded to me in a different way. I think that um, I don't, I, I'm not going to blame them on what right, how deep right, my right. depression is. But it amplifies. it amplifies. So if you're sitting there already depressed, already in your head, and they just say the slightest thing that maybe when you were not in a depressed mode, yeah. that wouldn't affect you as much. Right. But where you are mentally, that just grew. Yep. And it just grew in your head, and it just... And it made me shut down completely. Shut down, and right. I And I didn't want to talk to me because I said nobody wants to hear it. So right. nobody wants to hear so, it. So what you're saying is there are people that want to hear yes. it. Yes. There are people that want to hear it. There are people that want to help. Yes. They want to hear how bad it is. They want to hear... Yeah. You complain about every every minute of every day until we get to not to. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, you know, and that's what I try to do now in my work. You know, I, I can see now. I can spot out if I'm around somebody because I've been through it. I know what depression looks like. Right. And what it sounds like. And so, you know, now I can tap into that. And that's one good thing that came out of depression for me. You know, um, that you can help others. Yeah, that can help others. Right. And, you know, and I probably back in the day probably had the same, yeah. you know, snap out of it. Yeah. You know, that's what people say all the time right. when you say you're depressed. Oh, right. just snap out of it. Well, you it. just don't know until yeah. you get through it. <laughs> right. You, you don't. just don't know. Well, all right. you need is the. Right. Yeah. 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 You can talk about love all day long, but I mean, when it's right. really tested, that's when it's tested. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, a lot of people say, what is it that uh, you don't really know how, how hard you feel for something until there's a tragedy. Yes. Unfortunately. Right. Unfortunately, yeah. you just don't know where you're going to be until there's a tragedy. Yeah. Either you're a walk away or you want it's going to face it. Yeah. So now is your, not to get off subject, but we are because we just kind of swap around. <laughs> we do. Let's your mother, your mother's still around? Yeah. Cool. And we're Actually, still she lives with me now. My stepfather passed away. Aww. So, um, and so she lives with me here in town in my nice. house. And uh, yeah, so yeah. I, I take that, right. I take that as an honor. Uh, my mother, she's young still. Don't get at you. She, she probably <laughs> out, outlive me. <laughs> she's younger uh, than you. <laughs> but, you know, she doesn't want to be, she doesn't want to be a burden to my brother and I. Yeah. And I try to tell her it's no. not. That, no. that, that make, doesn't make sense. No. The words you were saying, Mom, doesn't make sense. Yeah, makes You're sense. not going to Never. home. You're not Never going to do this. Yeah. Just come on home to me. Right. She gave it to me, and I have to return it. So yeah. she's back exactly. at home with you now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, awesome. great. yeah. That's great. And I, um, yeah, and she had those thoughts you were just saying about your mom, when she was the same way. Right. Like, yeah. You know, I'm, I don't want to be a burden, you know, right. but she was afraid back to the house because my stepfather. But see, that causes depression. Yes. And not depression to a 40 or 50 or 60, but to, to whatever age they may be. Yes. You know, depression uh -huh. doesn't come in when you're 14 right. and leave when you're this. No. It, it could hit you at any time in any right. part of your life. And so can uh, I'm old. So can using. Yes. Yeah. 
using doesn't only come in at, at teenager right. years. Yeah. Using can talking come about in. amplifying, that's you when you're using the amplifies the depression. Right. I mean, you think it's filling the hole, right? But that's actually what just you're talking about. It. It's kind of delaying it. Yeah. And it when you delay it, fixing it just, a problem, yeah. it grows, yeah. right? And you start using more and more <laughs> because you just want to blink right. everything out. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah, I come yeah, from a long yeah. line of alcoholics, and I mean, you would Me think too. that it would be, you know, yeah, enjoy your time while you're drinking, but the next day, the shit's still the same. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, right. It might have been good last night, but now it's even worse because I got a hangover. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, yeah. you know, just looking for the next fix, pretty much. It's crazy. Yeah. But anyway, you, you moved on up, 2007, there's where we got it, and then ha- how did you become with the uh, Harm Foundation? Well, so years later, I ran into Ariel. Ariel worked for Harm Reduction, but they only had the office in Rome. Shout out to Ariel. Yes. Ariel's been brought up several, several times. times. We're going to have to thinking. get her on yeah, the show. Yeah, then. yeah she's yeah. great. Ariel. Yeah, you definitely need to get her here. Yes. Awesome. Uh, Maybe you could speak for her. Yeah, I will. Bring her. I will. <laughs> <laughs> come on yeah. back, Tom. See, come on back, Tom. Yeah. Bring Ariel. Bring her out. Yeah. 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 Bring her in here. Uh, yeah, so she saw me and she said that, you know, she knew the work I was doing in the HIV field and she knew I was an advocate and all that. And she was like, you know, if I get funding, we would, we're we going to open an office in Martinsville, Henry County. And if I get funding, I, if you're interested, you want to come on. And, uh, you know, I was really surprised because, yeah. you, know, like, you know, my age and she was interested in, you know, bringing me on. And Sounds like she's got a big heart. Yeah, she does. I love people like that. Yeah, she does. So uh, that's how I was, I sort of got into it. Okay. And then, like, I really didn't think I knew anything about harm reduction, but once I got in and understood what harm reduction was, I was like, I've been doing this for years in yeah. my HIV field. Mm-hmm. You know, I was trying to reduce harm from people who was going through what I went through. And right. uh, so, that's, yeah. what I, that's what I was going to ask you. What's the actual mission field, mission of the Harm Foundation? What is that? Just trying to reach people. Well, I'll let you explain. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's, like, it's, it's to reduce harm reduce with harm. people who use substances. Okay. Use. And, and that right. comes in many different forms. Like right. I said, it could be uh, by giving them clean supplies so they, they won't spread disease. They'll gotcha. be safer. Uh uh, Narcan is really important so that when they're using, don't use alone, right. especially if they're using slow, like heroin, uh, fentanyl. Mm. Uh, yeah, we, we and, and it start. It works. I mean, yeah. they're coming in now and they're telling them, "Well, I had the Narcan, I used it, so we're not having as many fatal overdoses yeah. since we have Narcan in Thank our God community." For that. And especially because the people that are using it have it in their hands, right. the Narcan with them. Right. So, and we give them as much as they want whenever they need it. Um, so it really is saving lives. It and, is. You know, a lot. There's a lot of controversy about harm reduction because some people say it's promoting drug use, and you're giving. But God, the lives you're the, saving. The drug use is already there. Yeah, yeah. Right. it's <laughs> already there. That's already the problem. Right. Yeah. Right. Just trying to keep people <laughs> yeah. alive here. Like I said, I've been losing friends. I've I've had. Uh, kids that I grew up in elementary school yeah, and soon after high school, they're no longer here. Right. I went on to raise a family. I went on to, you know, do things that I really cherish in my life and think that my life was worth something. It might not be to somebody, but to me it is. Yeah. And they didn't. Right. No, and right. that didn't stop. And I think that's and a then gr- the 2000s came and then the you yeah. know 2010s came and they're still yeah. I think I'm the only one in my neighborhood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's a great point because if you ask just about anybody that lives in this area, they know somebody oh, who's died from overdose. Or, right. or they're a family member or someone. So yeah. it's like it's affecting everyone in this community. And so, you know, that's why educating people about harm reduction is really important. Right. Uh, because it's so uh, rampant in our community. You know, it I is. got on Facebook, uh, oh, shoot, 10, 12 years now. I can't remember how long ago. Uh, that tied me into a couple of people that I hadn't known, mm-hmm. hadn't seen. And all, and believe it or not, I, there was a person that I went to high school with. He's homeless. For some, I don't know how he got a phone. I, I, I Everybody deserves a phone, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but he, he's homeless. Give them all a phone. <laughs> right? yeah. He's homeless living in Georgia. <laughs> with a phone. But, with a phone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But to see him like that, that breaks my heart. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, we Don't weren't like the same person. We weren't great friends. We're, we knew each other. We I think we played football together. Um, but to see him like that, it, it breaks my heart. Yeah. Uh, and I wish 
I wish him the best. He's still he's still here. I seen a post this morning. That's good. a little wacky, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was yeah, a post. Working he's, through it. he's working through it. Yeah. Um, we did get the two minute warning. We did. We did. So we that did. see how quick it was. Yeah, by? that was really quick. Yeah, was good. You yeah. looked a little nervous when you came in here today. Yeah, well, you, and then when you guys tell me it was an hour, better? I was like, oh, even uh, more. Right? My heart started going. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, but that was good, right? I thought yeah. this was a thirty was minute show, and it's going to be an hour. Are you <laughs> <Yeah>. crazy? <laughs> Yeah. Well, we'd you, love to have you back, man. Can yeah, you bring Ariel back with you? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to tell her what, I had a great time. Good. And we talked about important things. Awesome. So, I think we were supposed to talk about some other things, yes, too, but right? we missed them. Yeah. We missed we'll them. get back to them. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything you want to mention before you go? Yeah, I mean, did we, we miss some something time. that's. Uh, oh, we, 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 we missed everything. Little, yeah, we didn't we talk did. about We did. We did. We did. Uh, we didn't talk about the anything business. Anything you want to, anything else you want to bring? Well, I just want to, I just want to say that, uh, I hope that people will consider uh, and be more loving when it comes to people who use and understanding and not such judge, judgmental. Amen. And, you know, um, I mean, we're, there's somebody's daughter or son. Amen. And that, that, that for, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt <laughs> you, but there's a song on the radio now that somebody's daughter and that breaks my heart. Yeah. When I hear it going down the road, I get, I get a little <laughs> teary eyed going down, you know. But yeah. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. That was no, great, man. Yeah, no, you're welcome. And I thank you for thank being you, coming out here and being real, being yourself. All right. We'll well, have I you back. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Anytime. Please come back. Yeah, anytime. Please, I enjoyed please. it. Love it. Great. <laughs> all right. You all be real and come on back. Come on back. <laughs>